you know what? We and we can talk about this in my committee. Sue knows this. They, they tried to defund the police and we were successful in pushing back on that this past session. We fought them, we filibustered them, and we, we filled their plans in large part. We're going to fund the police, and I'm also going to have the Maryland State Police directed to shut issue permits. Right now there's a racist policy. Only the elite get to have your, your right to carry permits in Maryland. That's a disgrace, it's, it's racist, it's wrong. And if you're a upstanding citizen, and you can demonstrate that you're not a felon or dangerous person, I'm gonna direct the state police to follow the law and to make that happen for you. So every single one of you is a protected You can do it. It can be done tomorrow if the governor decides to do that. And in the context of public safety, we've got to make sure our police are funded. We've got to make sure that they have the apparatus they need. And I will use the bully pulpit to defend them, including how we did on the House floor, to stop this crazy uh, stealing of their due process. Do you know that police are the only individuals in Maryland that have to give statements if they're falsely accused or if they're accused of something? Their Fifth Amendment right to silence is violated. They have to give a statement under oath to their authority as to what happened, okay? That's been the law, but now they've changed it even worse. Now they have a, a requirement that says that you can be someone in prison, rightfully in prison, file an MPIA against an officer, and make false complaints against the officer. And that officer has zero due process in this because it does not have to be signed under oath anymore. So I'm going to reestablish through pressure on, on, the agent, on the agency that has to review this and through forcing the legislature front and center, we've got to get this back, that if you're going to have a complaint, we need transparency. I'm all for that. If you're going to accuse an officer of a crime, you better put your name to it. You better make sure it's stated under oath. Otherwise, we have a free-for-all that is... Um, simply going to make our officers leave the state. And we're seeing that. So that's an important issue for me. Uh, we fought that on the House floor. And uh, finally, election integrity. You know, I had the privilege of serving our president for three weeks in Philadelphia to try to bring accountability and integrity to the election process. And I'll tell you, when I was there, I saw the fraud, okay? People say, oh, you didn't see this. You no, know, I witnessed it. Multiple Trump team lawyers witnessed it. We swore out affidavits. It went up to Justice Alito. Justice Alito, God bless him. Thank God for Justice Alito and Justice Thomas. Yes. Those two are strongest. And Justice Alito issued a stay in Pennsylvania. And he stopped the process because he said, this, is, this has got to be looked at. We have to hear this case. But sadly, as you know, the Supreme Court requires four votes. He couldn't get his fourth vote, so they dismissed the Pennsylvania cases. The rest is history, at least for now. But I, I want to bring that to Maryland, so I'm working before the election as part of our campaign, doing what we can to raise awareness to this, and uh, individually working with groups like uh, Maryland Voter Integrity, which I urge you to consider helping, groups like Super Citizen that are going to be fighting this uh, for our election integrity. We have a right to see the voter lists and the signature cards. And we don't need to pay $5,000 for every time we ask for this like they want us to. There has to be a procedure to audit our election, and I want to get it done. And we need to make sure that as we move into the election, coming up, that we have an apparatus through all 24 jurisdictions that will monitor this. So if you're willing to help us out, that's part of my campaign plan. We want to monitor the election, and we want to get the information to attorneys who know how to turn around uh, potential complaints. So with that, I'd like to take some questions. Um, it's an honor to be here. I am thrilled to be out there working six, sometimes seven days a week for our freedom values. And let me tell you some hope. I'll end on this point. I'm here for, not for me, I'm here for the hope for my children. I have nine children. I've been in Maryland all my life. My wife and I were born and raised in Maryland. Well, I was born in D.C., but raised in Maryland. 
And I'm telling you, I've never seen our freedoms such a stink as we have now. And it sadly is not coming from the left or the right solely. It's a combination. It is a, a fight against the, the spiritual powers of darkness as well as Marxism, as uh, Pat talked about. The Marxist ideology is sweeping through our state. But guess what? The communists are fearful people. Patriots are not fearful. We are called to be bold as lions. And so that is why I thought, you know what? If not us, who? Right? And if not now, when? We've got to do this now because now is when the fight is on. And so the hope is, well, how is this going to play out in a, quote, blue state? And I love talking about this with my uh, establishment friends. Because you look at the numbers and the numbers should scare the establishment. 24% of the Maryland GOP today support Governor Hogan's policies, support him. 76% want him out in the Maryland GOP. Okay? That's a fact, McLaughlin Group. We are sick and tired of the overreaches. 56% of the Democrats today say that the party is being taken in the wrong direction, the Democrat Party of Maryland, and that their leaders are too far left. That's an opportunity. 62% of the independents, same thing. They want people who are constitutional, who believe in individual rights, and they despise the lockdowns. I had an outpouring of what I call soccer moms from all backgrounds, who are thrilled that I'm running because they're furious at their kids being forced masked after being promised that they were not gonna be masked this fall. They got everybody to re-enroll, and then they pulled the rug out from under them and said, oh, sorry. And now with the vaccine mandate and passport that's coming, do you all know that there's a passport coming in Maryland? Our governor and the government of Maryland has established something called myirmobile.com. You can look it up. The QR code is going to be something that's a part of five states that have signed up for it. And along with the, um, uh, the QR code for the VAX passport, it's able to be, things are able to be added to it. So ultimately this is a communist CCP type approach to this whole entire response to the pandemic. And the, the outcome of this is gonna be tracking, it's gonna be social credit scores. And if you, don't, if you show up to an event like this and they don't like it in China right now, today, they can turn your credit cards off they can lock doors that you have badges to enter for work. They can even in the middle of the night relocate you. And you know, that's one of the things that I want to do is end that. Because in the statute, Title 14, we didn't take an oath to Title 14 of the Public Safety Article. We did not take an oath to Governor Hogan or the executive orders of any Johnny Zero or anybody. We took an oath as public officials to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Maryland. And by God, we're going to keep our oaths and we're going to make sure that we have those principles ruling and reigning. And that means we eliminate this tracking system. This is a long approach. Now, and I, this, is the, this is the hook part, okay? It sounds gloomy that this tracking system is coming. It's already in Hartford County, by the way. Anne Arundel, Prince George's, and Charles and uh, Montgomery are looking at a VAX passport. And some of you might say, well, what's wrong with that? Look, if you want the VAX, great, I'm all for it. That's why I support the option. But it's, not, it's no longer an option anymore. It's becoming, you get it because the governor said you get it, or the government said, or Biden said you get it, or else you don't get to be a citizen. That is a communist approach to things. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's going to fail. It's going to fail because we're Americans, we believe in freedom, and we cannot let this flag dip. We cannot allow this to happen. It's unconscionable. If we try to leave to another state, they're going to follow. This is our stand right here. And it's possible. It's doable. As, we, as we've seen, there's been victories. Jordana has demonstrated that. Easy. It's, it's, you know what? You just stand up and fight. 
and you, you take it to him, but we have to show up. And so that's what I'm asking you to do is to show up, to help us out. Please go to my website, coxforfreedom.com, sign up. We are on the move. There's a grassroots campaign like we've never seen before. I was part of the 1994 uh, Republican Revolution, and I saw that overwhelming uh, impact. And the polling is showing that it's even more important today. People are even more overwhelmingly excited and motivated on our side to make a difference. And we can do that. So thank you, and I'll take some questions. God bless you. Yeah.